Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to explain the universal gas law and I'm going to give you some tips on how to distinguish the four core processes that we study in the thermodynamics studies. First of all, let's start with uh, the universal gas law, which is the following. We have P times V to be equal with NRT. Now, let's explain each of the variables. We have P to be the pressure of the gas in Pascals, V, which is the volume, which is measured in uh, cubic meters, N, which is the number of moles, <clears throat> in uh, our gas, the unit is moles, R is the universal gas constant, we're going to find the units later, and T is the absolute temperature measured in Kelvin. So we can derive the units of R by rearranging this equation like this we can isolate R and we can find that R is equal to PV over NT. And so the units of R is Pascals times cubic meters times moles to the minus one because it's reciprocal and reciprocal Kelvin. So let me explain the terms of this law. In this container we have a gas and moles of gas. The pressure this gas is under is defined as the force that there is on this piston. Maybe we have some uh, weights here or sand. It's the force over the surface area of the piston, so it's force over A. Now the volume of the gas, which is takes over all this space under here, it is basically the surface area times the height H of this apparatus here. And the temperature is how many degrees Celsius or how many Kelvin this gas has. So let's begin with an isothermal process. The isothermal process is a compound word, iso, which is derived from the Greek component iso, which means equal or constant and thermal from the Greek word thermodida which is associated with heat 
and temperature. So, what does an isothermal process mean? It means that we have an equal temperature across the whole process. So, T is constant in this case. And so, our universal gas law becomes like this. P is equal to nRT times 1 over V. So, this is constant because the amount of mass, the amount of moles in this case of the gas is constant, this is a constant and the temperature again is constant. So we can say that the pressure is proportional to 1 over V or inversely proportional to the volume. So the PV diagram of this process is something like this, a hyperbola, which has the initial and final volumes, so it's V0 and V1, and P1 and P0. Now, if we are asked to find the work being done by the gas, in this case, we simply take the area underneath our curve, and this is the work, which we can find simply by minus integral from V0 to V1 of P of V dV. This is the definition of work. And we can find that the work is nRT ln V0 over V1. Next, we are going to take a look at the isobaric process, which is derived, again, from iso, iso equal, and baros, in Greek it is varos, which is the weight of the masses of the gas, basically the force that we say, and weight is associated in fluid mechanics with pressure. And so we have that in this case that the pressure is constant. And so, if we take our gas law once again, that P is nRT over V, and P is constant, it means that T 1 over V1 is equal to T2 over V2. It means that the temperature and the volume of the gas are proportional to each other. So temperature is proportional to the volume. If we see the process on the PV diagram, is simply a straight horizontal line leading to a pressure like this P 
and v0 and v1. Once again, the work done by the gas is this area over here. And we can find it again using the integral v0 to v1 of p dv. But since p is constant, it can be taken outside of the integral. We're left with only the integral of pv. And so the work is simply p minus p times v1 minus v0. Our shape is just a rectangle. Next, we have the third process. It is the, called isochoric process. Again, from iso. And choros, in Greek, choros, which is 3D space. Okay, so this is associated with volume. And so, in this process, the volume is kept constant. And from our gas law, we have that P is equal to nRT over V. Or, alternatively, V is nRT over P. This means that the temperature is proportional to the pressure of the gas and that T1 over P1 is equal to T2 over P2. Now, this process on a PV diagram has this form, a vertical line, in this case, like this. This is a constant volume. This is P0 and P1. Now, we see that there is no space under the curve to calculate the work be done, which can be confirmed from the integral minus integral p dv, which is from v to v, and this is zero. So the work being done by the gas is zero. And now we are going to see the final of the four processes, the adiabatic process, which is derived from the negating alpha which in the Greek language it means that anything following this alpha is being negated. So this is associated with not. And the verb Diavenno which means pass through or for humans pass by. We will not uh, want to see this, so we keep only the pass through. So this word means that nothing passes through. In our case, for our system, it means that no heat from the system's surroundings is passing through 
the wall and into the gas. And so this process has a PV to the power of gamma to be constant or PV over T is also constant where gamma is CP over CV and CP is the specific heat capacity under constant pressure and CV is the same thing specific heat capacity under constant volume now the diagram of this process is once again a hyperbola but steeper compared to the isothermal process and once again we have the initial volume and the final volume we have P0 and P1 and also here we have a T0 and a T1 once again the work is the area under this curve of P of V this time dV but this integral to be calculated is a bit more difficult so I'm not going to do that for here but what I want you to keep is the definition and basically that no heat is added into the system from its surroundings.